Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, welcome again to another episode on Talk Architecture. I'm your host, Nazeti Muhammad Yaqob, and I will continue with the part two discussion on what I talk about when I talk about the design thesis. Now, I have impl- implied several things, which is based on what I, we have researched and a collective voice in understanding about the design thesis being a crucial year for the graduating architect and a crucial year for the beginning part of an architect's, uh, a budding architect or future architect journey. It is not to be underestimated what the design thesis year could give, could provide for and fuel the fire and passion that the architect or the budding architect need in order for him or her or they to take on this life called architecture. It is not a coincidence that I called my blog Life is a Design Thesis, in which you can find the link in this blog post, sorry, podcast post. Now, I'd like to take a stand, which I have been taking when I was an academic, that I have my limitations as an academic, to teach and lead fifth year. I'd always had the encouragement and the benefit from collaborating in the studio design team with practicing design practitioners and architects. Yeah, may they be professional or just graduate architects. And some of the graduate architects are really very good, such as Kevin Motlow. And we know that he has a lot of work out there internationally that has been innovative and um, challenge, challenge normal practices. Now, he's not the only one. There are many other... um, people who may be professional architect or architecture graduates that are um, innovating or doing work that are authentic and able to be critical to the body of work that's out there. And some of these are very much, um, these people are very much needed to be part of the um, academy, a part of the setup, a part of the teaching staff. Why I'm saying practitioners lead the studio is exactly what I say, what I meant. But the full time academic could facilitate and make it um, easier for the student of architecture following the course to. Um, to achieve what they are supposed to achieve in that uh, stipulated time. And the Department of Architecture or the school head would also be instrumental in helping to facilitate the processes. The context is Malaysia. So Malaysia could be similar to your country, what happens here, uh, or it could be different or, you know, in terms of practice, and I don't say that I know about what's happening in your country. I have read um, in the internet um, different curriculums. I have researched them before because that was part of my job in looking at the curriculum. And I know enough what's happening out there. With the advancement of technology and with a lot of um, debates and, and uh, you know, things that have been uh, coming up 
in the architectural fraternity regarding the kind of quality work that we have or not, all these things somehow look towards the architecture education part, what happens in the first five years. It is from that point of view of an, the former academic that I wish to, to look at this and the mistakes that I have witnessed and or I myself made in assuming things and how that didn't work. The reasons for what I did, what I did um, when I was employed in a local university in Malaysia is because um, I realized that it didn't work. So that's why I come to this conclusion. I needed other people to actually give their opinions about this before I could do this podcast. And for the last podcast where I interviewed architect Lok We and others, it has been, you know, reasoned out that the practitioner was more interested interested regarding this matter than academics because the academics are not practitioners. There are two different types of people here or job scope here. One of the mistakes, that the three things that I'm going to talk here in this episode, and one of them is making design thesis like a thesis, like an academic thesis. Though, though there's a word thesis in the design thesis, I'd always thought about why can't it be called a final project? Because, you know, it's a combination of the last project and the rest are all projects. Uh, previously, why can't it just be another project? But it's a final project. And then I was understanding that it is about origination or the authenticity. And another thing is about why it's like, like there is similarities, why it is like an academic thesis is because of the complexities or the challenges that one has to go through. But unlike um, some of discussion that I have encountered before, complexities are not only technical complexities. It's not saying that it has to be a building of three stories or higher or services have to be a certain uh, com complexity. It's not that. The complexity is in the design problem. So I'll talk about that in, in, um, in detail later. The other point is um, linking design thesis with social science research or dissertation. So again, just now there was a notional thesis for the first question. The second question when I said about um, the school thinking that it will be easier for the design thesis to be linked to the design dissertation that the student is currently doing. If that is made an option, that's fine. I mean, there could be theses where the students would gain from doing the research in dissertation. I know of a case study of one of the students who's in the beginning of the master's course that in 2015-16 sorry, 14, 15, who actually did the dissertation on the mosque and also did that for the um, design thesis. But she told me that only a bit of what she did in dissertation is relevant to the design thesis. And we all know that. It's so obvious. Where the design thesis is about the context, yeah, about the place, about the... Um, about a development of understanding about the context and the program and so on. The dissertation is um, to do with uh, a research inquiry of a certain part of certain things that you wish to know about the typology of the mosque, for example. So inevitably, there is something that you could use, but not something that is crucial to the design thesis outcomes. So that is the two first questions or two first mistakes. Uh, I consider them mistakes that the academician or the school of architecture could do is those two things earlier. 
making design thesis like a thesis, a general thesis, um, not looking at it as a design problem, um, but looking into just problems, uh, just to generalize. Design problem is different than just problems or uh, to do with the uh, problem statement, you know, in thesis. So that's number one. Number two is linking design thesis topic with the social science research or dissertation topic and thinking that you would save time doing it. In fact, it could be, it could derail your design thesis or dis design thesis. The dissertation will always be there like that. It's an academic piece. So even the intention or the um, aim of a design thesis is different than this dissertation that we know. So the third one, which is a mistake, is also other courses. We do not defend, sorry, we do not defend this uh, architecture as much as we should in the academic world. Other courses stick to their guns like medicine. The clinical practitioner part is so important to inform medicine body of work or the theory of medicine. There are two separate elements, two courses taught in a university where the medical practitioners, they practice, they really practice medicine. I mean, medicine cannot just be theory, as you can see. And why not architecture? Architecture cannot be just theory as well. It's application. So because of that, um, we are easily, um, shall I say the word bully? We are easily, we, re, we, we unnegotiate or we, we uh, cop out or we, you know, we don't push for that debate. We don't push, push for that right. That architecture is a practicing course and that we should have more budget for um, the practitioner to be involved in architecture course. I mean, we just cop out. I mean, the, the um, Council of High, um, of um, Heads of Architecture courses or studies in our country, this is not something that we deal or discuss with, I don't really hear of that, or it's not out there in the open, it's not being discussed, it's just been skirted around, you know. This is really a core, um, a core problem, a root problem that needs to be weed out and look at it and discuss in earnest about why in universities you teach the way you teach architecture. It's not to be swept under the carpet or made to be a, a redundant piece of, of, of um, issue. Um, because I always thought about that throughout my years of being in academia. Why aren't we really getting to the root of the problem of architecture education? So going back to these three topics, I like to go back to the um, making design thesis like thesis, meaning that there are similarities and the similarities are in the complexity, but the complexity are different complexity, not the same as what thesis complexity is, because thesis has a validation and a theory and a, what do you call it, uh, experimentation, whereby architecture, um, is something that is to do with drawings and to do with uh, the design problems that you resolve as an architect. The design problem could be from the master planning level, urban design level, to write up to detailed design of something very specific, like a toilet. What it is is that there was an interesting, uh, interesting thesis it started out the student investigate how um, problems of housing for migrant workers in a selected part of Kuala Lumpur 
and the use of existing um, housing uh, that was originally for families, how that become the migrant workers' quarters. And because the structure has to be redone in, um, a, in a meaningful but um, cost-cutting way while providing um, some sort of level of comfort for the migrant workers in the middle of Kuala Lumpur. And yet, um, this proves to be an issue of dignity, of how squalid conditions that migrant workers are often uh, forced to live in, and how the first instance the student saw um, or talked to someone who saw a migrant worker bathing at the roadside because of the lack of facilities inside. So how you rehabilitate a building to, to get some sort of a living condition that is, is uh, dignified for the migrant worker. So the first attempt the student did was to, she was occupied in the first semester of the year long course on solving the toilet problem and creating a module of the toilet. And it should be not misconstrued that what? Are we designing a toilet for design thesis? I mean, for goodness sake, you know, um, we are not trying to, um, uh, what do you call, run foul of the d guidelines set out by the school because that is one, uh, one uh, design problem. There are other design problems pertaining to that particular um, uh, design thesis. Maybe, maybe it was not that apparent, but that's the first semester. So the second semester, the student will conjure um, a much more schematic and a much more detailed uh, solution, looking into the many other design problems and the typology of housing. Isn't that a great thing? So um, students of architecture who want to collaborate with the studio design team. Uh, and in this case, that was led by Kevin Marlow. In that case, um, they agree, they are accepting and, and think it's a good idea to do that particular topic. Previously, when when it was said that students seek a topic and seek a supervisor from the industry, the supervisor could also, this is just the main point is student and a design practitioner from the industry. So the design practitioner from the industry could offer yeah, the design thesis topics or design thesis challenges or design thesis uh, area to be studied with groups of students who will come out with the topics. So that was what we did for that particular year where we did Kampong Baru, a Malay village, urban Malay village in the middle of Kuala Lumpur, which is slowly disappearing. And um, the Bukit Ceylon, Bukit Bintang area, which has the migrant worker issues there. Subsequently, we did the Kampong Krimchi um, area, which has issues of um, low income, um, low income residents, uh, people who live in low income housing and the residents um, problems regarding to a lot of issues like recreation congestion and poor uh, facilities and haphazard um, uh, master planning and stuff like that you know, for that one. And that's to do with the urban poverty as well. A lot of things there. And um, the, the last uh, design thesis uh, year was the Petaling Jaya Old Town, where obviously that area is targeted to be the next new development. And at the moment, there are still residents and still a vibrant community where looking into how to make it a much more, um, have a sense of dignity in terms of a sense of place, a sense of arrival, a lot of other things 
a proper park and other proper facilities with for the market, the, the library, the station, and so on, and the spots, yeah, spots and recreation. So what we're trying to say is community-driven or site context-driven or context-specificity um, projects um, could provide for a lot of design problem to provide f- problems to provide for enough complexity for a design thesis, not to be exactly like a thesis, but um, context specificity um, uh, way of acknowledging the design come, the problems come from the site which is investigated has a lot of complexities that uh, could help the student of architecture understand what architecture is uh, about and at this stage, working with the design practitioners from the industry would really help in um, gaining the confidence, getting all the crits, getting to getting real um, the problems, real problems that we need to solve at the site. And so that easily, the first two mis- issues or mistakes that I see, um, you know, not ha- not not allowing design thesis to be that special cause that links to industry and the intellectual rigor that comes from that, not allowing that and thinking that it's just another social science research, but but withdrawing. So you know, it's a mistake, it's a big mistake that schools of architecture that I've seen are making. So, and the fact that we're not defending architecture as a practicing um, discipline. We're just allowing architecture to be bullied right, left and center, even in the industry, you know. um, And is it always to do with um what do you call it um when we talk about sustainability it is not expanding it is not on the practical practitioner side academia is supposed to uh, publish real life challenges it's supposed to publish this all these case studies and um academia is stuck in and um, regurgitating the same old stuff again and again. Um, and I kept on saying topics that are being done again and again. Um, even in my area of universal design, how much more of the same topic would be reused again and again in the master's and thesis course. And, and that there should be a clear line demarcation, separation between social science research in academia, you know, um, you know, and architecture research. Because architecture is not social science based. We made the mistake of being in this other departments and business. You know, real estate, they are very close to valuation and business. And that's social science, really. And I know because I came from my PhD, I did in a school that is social science research based. They didn't have architecture. The architecture traditionally comes from arts and humanities. And the science, there is a science in it, in a lot of what architecture does, obviously. Architecture will be lost when it runs away from arts and humanities. Because as you know, what is architect, what is an architect, what is architecture, is between the arts and science. And that was the debate in many of these episodes that we had earlier. So think about it. Think about what I talk about when I talk about design thesis, is that design thesis is a core, is the, um, not epicenter, but the culmination of all those four years of, of, uh, understanding what 
is it what is architecture and what it is to be an architect and finally with some competencies and skills at that fifth year level I can go on and do more research in what I want to do if I want to be an academic if I want to be as a practitioner that look into certain architecture component to whatever interest that I have and I could actually apply it in my architectural work obviously some students of architecture most of them would go into commercial architecture and um and we would think that um only 4% would actually be um a critical architect this has been said before not all the not all students of architecture is going to be critical architects but i'm more interested in getting why am i more interested in getting more percentage of architect to stay the course in traditional architecture roots rather than become a graphic designer or a product designer or a filmmaker or um a project manager and stuff like that why i'm interested because um the inquiring mind of the architect can exist not as um the star architect but also as the everyday architecture based business nothing wrong with business is how the business devalues certain um you know devalue certain things in society that is of the problem how businesses or commercial pra- practice um not look into problems of societies is what i concern and i and there should be more professionals who would be concerned and would want to be involved in solving these problems that's why we need not a total um maverick or someone who 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 would be critical and doing their work on their own but more of anyone you know a director in a company a senior member of in a company or um a sole proprietor or um design practitioner writing books while practicing uh on a few designs whatever it is entrepreneur that all of them concern about architecture and traditional architecture route that is why i talk about a design thesis because design thesis could be um where you start your inquiry about architecture after been in architecture for 4 years you want to start something it may be right it may be wrong at the end of the design thesis but you will have a lot of learning and the learning comes from having co- collaborated with someone in the um industry someone who would take time and to mentor and coach properly obviously not just create once in a while and leave it to the okay, academicians to sort out the mess no so yes that's it that's that is the conclusion for what i talk about when i talk about design thesis and i hope that this is a conclusion that is clear and that it'll take um and the listener if you are involved in academy or you are a practitioner you take on board as as a clear criticism that is relevant and that has been debated and that has been thought about for many years and whether you agree or disagree with the sentiment here it has to be said it has to be known so thank you very very much to those listening and hope that we can go forward with more information on this topic and other topics that will emerge later thank you